Hey folks, Tom Red 1 1 here. Uh, back with the uh, BioLite Camp Stove 2. Um, sorry if the audio is going to be junk, but um, <laughs> it is like in the teens here. It is snowy and windy, and um, I wanted to uh, finally get this uh, video out. So I got it started. I need to bore you with starting it up. So I hooked my meter up to it, and I, I don't know if you can see it. So I'm going to try. Sorry if I'm jacking you guys all up here. Here we go. So, just with the meter and we're running 4.987 volts. Or, uh, sorry, 4.98 volts. Uh, so, and you won't get the amperage and stuff till uh, watch the stuff till you plug something in. So I'm going to plug my phone in, which is pretty much dead. So, to save you guys from motion sickness, I'm just going to tell you what's going on there. Um, uh, when I plug my phone in, I'll show you after it gets going. On the, uh, the battery meter, it's got, well, it just went to five green lights. I've only had this thing running for less than five minutes here. Uh, so we're charging at 20% on the phone. <clears throat> so it's, it just went up to five. Oh, it went down when I plugged it in. It was at five plus six blinking. Now it's at three steady. So I'm assuming it's going to be pulling it. Um, pull a little bit of power so it's probably going to uh, take a little bit here so let's reload uh, reload the stove up here I got some bigger stuff I this was just smaller stuff I made to get the initial start I got some stuff I batoned up I lovely Ohio we've had some crazy storms so I've got branches and stuff I've just been uh, cutting up and batoning and everything okay so we're at 1.10, well, it keeps jumping around. She keeps jumping around there, which is going to happen with the thermoelectric generator. But 1.1 1 .1 between 3 and 10 um, amps. We went to, we're at 4.90 volts. Watts, we've got 5.4, 5.3, 5.4, 5.3. Um, watts. So, we're already up to 21% 21, 21 here. Um, so it seems to be holding pretty consistent. Um, that green light just went down to 2. Our fire, fire intensity is all the way up, our fan's all the way up. So we'll just, we'll just monitor it and see where, uh, see where she goes from there. Alright guys, while this is going, um, I'm just kind of feeding her, keeping her going here. Um, but uh, one of the questions asked, uh, Olivia had asked about the heat probe, the larger heat probe, that if it's um, going to take up, uh, you know, if it's going to affect loading the stove and stuff. And it does. I mean, even the, the old stove, it, it, it's the same, about the same length, maybe a little bit longer, but um, it definitely has a, a larger diameter. Um, yeah, I think it'll affect it a little bit. I mean, it's probably going to take up more surface area inside the, the chamber. But I haven't had any issues as long as you're feeding it around. And uh, you get some of these blocks that I, I mean, I, I pre-cut these to test stoves before I take them out in the field. Um, a little bit drier stuff. But even this is a little bit high. But if you get them smaller than that, you can tuck them down and underneath and stuff. So you just kind of have to... You just kind of have to play with it a little bit. But that's all with, with any of these um, gas-powered uh, or fan-assisted stoves or gasification stoves I have. Once you get them cooking, you got to keep them. You, you, they're maintenance. They're high maintenance. you got to keep them going because, you know, they burn so quick and so efficient, which is nice for cooking and especially like something like this where you're charging your, uh, your phone and stuff. Um, it's good, but, you know, you definitely got to stick on them. You can't. You can't go wander off in the woods to go go find a tree to cut down and come back and expect it to be there. So, all right, guys. So it's been about 20 minutes. 
um, of having my uh, phone plugged in. Just been just been feeding her and uh, keeping an eye on the meter and stuff. Um, it started about 20, 21 percent when I initially plugged it in. That's a 29 percent, um, and I don't have this on airplane mode or anything. I actually saw something just uh, app um, updated while I was sitting here, um, but. Um, so if I had it on airplane mode or had it shut off, it would probably charge a little bit quicker. Um, so here, let me do this here. Sorry. Turbulence. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's been holding at 1 amp, the 4.9 volts, and um, the 5 watts. So you can see there, 388 milliamps since I started it. Um, so you can use that to indicate, um, you know, whatever you're charging. Because, you know, these smartphones and stuff, they're high drain. Um, you know, this, that's a 3 amp capable um, charger on there. So um, that could have something to do with it too. Now, the only thing with this, the full strength with the uh, flame and the fan. Um, since I've had it plugged in, um, it was at uh, five or six uh, green lights. It went down to two, and it has not moved. So I don't know if that is a um, is something that does not charge when it is um, when it has something plugged in, um, because it is probably taking a, a drain, especially with a you know fancy smartphone. But um, that's something you have to consider too that if you know you're trying to charge this battery bank that you got to charge whatever you got to do and um, unplug it so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to unplug this whole unit and see if this jumps up see if see if that has anything to do with it okay so it didn't it, it just went to the third mark so it has the two still green lights and the third mark is now just blinking which is indicating that it's charging that that amount so um, so it does take a drain on so that's something you got to consider if you're out in the field and you're planning on using um, using this as a battery bank after you go to sleep or whatever you know that you got to plan ahead to be able to um, plug in and charge whatever you're charging and then um, and then let everything off of this and and charge it. I'll have to try it with like a, you know, with a uh, one of my lights or something that it, that's not as high uh, high drain stuff like that, and see if that has anything to do with it. But just something to keep uh, keep ahead of. All right, guys. So showing you the first, uh, not the initial first burn I've done with it, but the first time I've hooked up the meter to it and, and had my phone plugged into it and stuff. I mean, it's say it's uh, it you know. It's pretty close to everything it's um, supposed to do as far as uh, rating wise and stuff. Um, and this was no pot on or anything like that. So I have a feeling if you have a pot on this, it is going to retain a little bit more heat. Maybe more heat's going to go onto that probe. Uh, I've got some other tests that I'm going to be doing, um, hopefully in better weather here to try and help that out. But um, I've got some other tests I'm going to do, bringing out the grill, the kettle, um, stuff like that. I've got um, locked up. Uh, in the near future here so um, I'm just uh, doing this first burn just to show you kind of the um, the output of everything and it, it is uh, you know pretty close to everything it's uh, supposed to do so I uh, thank you guys for listening and I'll talk to you soon